What is going on, guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Heart, Heart DFS. Today, we have another NBA slate breakdown for DraftKings. If you're new to my channel, I do make price pick videos for the NBA, which are daily, as well as NBA, PGA, and NFL DraftKings slate breakdowns and analysis that you can find on my channel. And I will occasionally put up NFL all day in NBA Top Shot content as well. It's a lot of content for you guys to enjoy. I hope you guys are enjoying them. And thank you for all the support recently. You know, I keep saying it in every video, but, you know, I greatly appreciate it. If we get 200 followers on Twitter, I might do a little giveaway. Um, but, yeah, I really want to get to 100 followers just to be able to engage with you guys more. It's very pivotal for the people that play uh, the NBA slate breakdowns just because of the, how much news comes out when it comes to the NBA, especially these last few games of the NBA season before the playoffs. And before I get into it, before I get into it, I just want to go over my lineup just to show you guys the route I went and where and why. And I will be having a new series, video series coming out soon that will finish off the rest of these, you know, three games for the regular NBA season and then go into the playoffs. So with the whole Thunder debacle and news with them resting their backups who were playing over the starters just because the starters were injured and then bringing up like six G League guys to start was just wild. And so the, what that did was basically allow you guys to play a couple $3,000 players and play, pay up for some bigger names. Trey Jones obviously was chalk once DeJounte Murray hit was out, ruled out. Excuse me. Not the best score, but obviously he's really good at getting assists. So, you know, bought the chalk, went that route. Kobe White wasn't good about this. Was really hoping for him to have a really good game just because of Zach being ruled out. I know I said he sucks in the last video, and he does. Uh, did okay at 3,900. You know, some people went there. Was it the best spot for Kobe? No, but, you know, I'm fine with that. Giannis... I'm not one to tilt or get mad in these videos, but Giannis didn't shoot the ball once. Not once in the first quarter. Zero times. Zero points in the first quarter. All he did was pass. Didn't even get rebounds. I think he had one rebound in the first quarter. Second quarter, shoots the ball three times. Five points. Five points, two rebounds at half for Giannis. NBA MVP, NBA champion, one of the best players in the league, one of the best players probably of all time when his career is over. Zero points in the first half, shoots it zero times. All I got to say. And then he gets foul trouble. Can't even finish the game. Pat Williams, he was a little chalky, 19.5%, but the past few games he's been getting a lot of run. Got named in the starting lineup to guard Giannis. You know, did pretty decent, 18-6. Didn't mind going there. Sar was one of the guys I took a shot on on the Thunder players. I really wanted Horde, um, but I wasn't, you know, following along too closely as I was at the gym. So I ended up going with Sar because I knew he'd get the backup run at center off the bench. Did pretty well, 10, 12, and 1 with two blocks, you know, 1.7%, very low owned. Next guy, Xavier Simpson, starting point guard, only 11% owned. Went off for 10, 5, and 3, 26 fantasy points. As I said, very pivotal that you guys got at least two to three Thunder players in your lineup because it allowed you to pay up for three stars. I know the optimal build for the stars was Jan or not Giannis, but Jokic and Bede, and then a guy like Kyrie or DeRozan. Um, but yeah, I went to Rosen. Really liked him without Zach being in. Only 18% ownership. The game blew out, and he still got 40 points. Unfortunately, he probably could have got more if the game was close. Kyrie, 4.8% ownership. Really, you know, the only risk about Kyrie in this spot was the blowout risk. And it kind of did for a little bit, but he still managed to get 42 points. Kevin Durant wasn't shooting the ball well, so they gave Kyrie everything he needed and wanted. 62 fantasy points. So overall, it was, you know, the direction I went was pretty good. You know, went... Pretty much played all the right spots. I should have shifted some of this around to get in Horde and then a different guy, like not Kobe White, but, you know, that's the route I went. 
still was able to make a little bit of money but yeah let's get on to the slate breakdown for today we have a six gamer should be going through this pretty fast on the dallas side we got you look at the top 12k as i always say you know it's luca he's amazing been doing a lot better recently 75 fantasy points 73 55 70 getting a ton of assists ton of points ton of rebounds really like him in the spot against detroit the only risk is that this game has pretty big blowout potential just because detroit is now resting their starters and playing some absolute scrubs from the g league so that is the only risk with Luco. He does get run in um, blowout games. He has the past few, but maybe today he just doesn't for some reason. So keep that in mind. Jalen Brunson, I don't mind him at 6,100. Should get blowout run if, you know, th this game blows out. Good score. You know, can get you assists and rebounds. Playing about 35 minutes the past week. So I do like Jalen Brunson a little bit. Dinwiddie's price has dropped, so of his minutes. Um, I don't mind if you go there, especially if this game stays close. You know, 5-3 Dinwiddie, he does have some upside, so I don't mind it. Um, let's see, who else? Denny Smith, 5,100. We get about 30 minutes. Not the best score. Same with Bullock. He's a little bit better of a scorer. We'll probably get closer to 35 minutes, but really needs to hit a shot. Otherwise, he's going to tank your lineup. Powell looks like a decent play. You know, last year, the amount of times I played Powell when he did nothing and he got, you know, the same minutes, same start, did nothing. But, you know, this time he'll get 30, 42 minutes when he was chalk. Or 31 minutes, 42 fantasy points when he was chalk. I don't get it. But, I mean, it's a decent spot for Powell. I don't think you can expect 22 points or even 13 rebounds. I'd say you can kind of expect more to the... 12 to 15 points and like 5 to 8 rebound range, which is not bad at 4,700. But if this game does blow out, you can expect guys like Bertans at 3,100 to get a little bit more run. Especially with them being down um, Maxi Kleber. Maybe a little dust off Marquise Chris. He's a good point per minute guy. I don't mind if you take a dart throw on him. Who else? You know, they've been getting Josh Green some run. He'll get run in uh, a blowout game, probably 20 minutes, but not a high usage guy. It's really just Luke at the top of me and then taking a shot on one of these guards. And if you want to play Powell, you can. Detroit side, this, you know, this should have an asterisk over it. Huge risk in this game. Cade, I don't think he's played the past two games. Not in the injury report, but... As we know, they, he got benched, then he didn't play a game, and they've decided to start playing all these random G League guys. So I don't know if you can trust Cade and Sadiq Bey at all. Even if they start, they might get pulled. Everyone's trying to tank, so I don't know if he to go there. It seems forced. Killian Hayes, even him, only got 22 minutes in the game against Indiana. Had the start, but then didn't play much at all after that. Um, Isaiah Stewart, I believe it is the same. Yep, his minutes are just going down. <clears throat> They've really turned to guys like Isaiah Livers, 4,800. Looks pretty good. 43 minutes, 35. You know, not shooting the ball well, but is able to get you boards, assists, re points. Don't mind him at 4,800, especially if they're going to come out with news that that's the starting lineup. Same with Braxton Key. 30 minutes, 28. Shooting the ball decent. Can score, get you rebounds. You know, Frank, Frank Jackson, Evan about 34 minutes, good score. Same as Saban Lee, 35 minutes. So it really seems like Carson Edwards. So it's just, they just have a bunch of random low, low salary guys that they're going to throw in most likely today to tank more, pick it 39 minutes. I mean, pretty much anyone you want to pick out of those, those group of guys you can, you know, they're going to play a ton of minutes at Derek Walton. Maybe Luke Garza comes up from the G League and he plays, but definitely keep your eye on who's playing from this game, who's starting, because you're going to want to lock them into your lineups, just like the Thunder game yesterday. Moving on to Brooklyn, New York. 
Durant, Kyrie always are in play. Kyrie's price didn't move at all, 10K. I'd give the, like, the slight edge to Durant just because of how bad he played last game. They've been kind of going back and forth, him and Kyrie, in good games. So maybe it's Durant's turn tonight against Brooklyn, or not Brooklyn, against the Knicks. Um, Kyrie, I mean, don't mind if you go there, 10K. Had a great game yesterday. Maybe he continues the hot streak. Drummond screwed us in prize picks. Five fouls, was in foul trouble against Houston for some reason. You know, always a good point per minute guy when it comes to rebounding and points, but I guess foul trouble is randomly there when he plays some random teams. Bruce Bound, as I said last yesterday, you know, good point per minute guy, surprisingly. 15 points, you know, three rebounds, three assists, three blocks. Not going to have like a huge, huge ceiling. Unless he randomly goes off in the points. But he can definitely pay off, you know, his 5-3 salary. Don't mind it against the Knicks. Seth is questionable. A little too scoring dependent for me. The other guy to take a shot on is Claxton. As I said, his minutes might go up. If it's a blowout, it was a little, a little bit of a blowout for a while. Got 27 minutes, 21 fantasy points. If this game blows out, I can see Claxton playing again. A lot more minutes. Patty Mills got the start once again, just brutal. He just fell off the face of the earth. Never really does it for me. It's kind of just the guys at the top. Um, Brooklyn is wanting to win these last few games just to improve their standing in the, the playoffs. So they're running Kyrie and Durant pretty much the whole game. New York side, we really like RJ Barrett, 8K. He is the point guard, has all the usage, so in a great spot against Brooklyn. Same with Alec Burks. Um, a little less of a usage guy, but he's kind of the other point guard for the team. Don't mind him. at 6,600. Really like quickly. 6,100. Played 34 minutes. I told you guys, play him. Play him if um, who's out. I think it was the same same kind of lineup, but I said play quickly. He was 5,400. He's coming off some really good games. This is the same thing. Play quickly. He's going to do great against Brooklyn in the spot, unless he shoots terrible. But I think, you know, you should really go to quickly and Barrett. And then, you know, maybe game stack it with someone on the Brooklyn side, like Kyrie or KD. Mitchell Robinson getting the minutes now just because they're tanking. Played well last game. I don't think he gets a chase there, especially against Brooklyn. A little too fast pace for him. Obi Toppin, pretty safe play. Going to get you about 35 minutes. Been, been scoring pretty well. You know, he's not the best shooter, but he has been shooting a decent last game. I don't mind a few other 5 6. You know, I guess Taj is getting a little bit of minutes, but. Quentin Grimes will get minutes if he plays. Um, yeah, I think you can expect at least 25 minutes from Quentin Grimes off the bench if he plays. Otherwise, I don't think he'd to force anything else. Maybe Sims. He'll get run at 3,100, but that's about it. Boston, Chicago. Really like Tatum and Brown at the top. Um, I'd give the slight edge to Brown. He's just playing a little bit better recently. As you can see, his ceiling is about 55, but it's still pretty good at 8,700 in this matchup against the Bulls. Wouldn't go to Horford at all. He's terrible. Robert Williams is out. 59 for Marcus Smart is just okay. Derek White, 55. Okay price against Chicago. You know, seeing the minutes, but just not a lot of usage, you know, Tatum and Brown eat up all that usage, so I'd really only go to those two guys at the top. You can take a shot on a guy like Thice. He is getting the starting run. A little bit of a revenge game for him against the Bulls. Not going to have a ton of usage or scoring opportunities, but 4,600, not a bad spot. Grant Williams, I don't think he should be in the NBA, but I guess he's one of the best three-point shooters. Been playing... Decent and 4,200 if you want to take a shot on him hitting some threes and getting some boards you can go there I do like Peyton Pitchard a little bit Good score and if this game blows out So you know for some reason even though I was playing today He's going to get you, you know at least 25 if not 30 minutes 
and at 3900 you know I don't mind it uh, that really does it for me on this side it's mostly just kind of the two guys at the top and then maybe a guy like Tice or Pritchard Chicago side DeMar's price hasn't moved uh, been playing great recently don't mind if you go back to him Vooch as I said not for me 3 of 19 last game will obviously shoot the ball a lot better and Boston doesn't really have any bigs to guard him so I don't mind him but rather go to Zach 7600 price hasn't moved he's gonna shoot the ball a ton had a great game the last game he played sat out yesterday but really like Zach in the spot Lonzo out for the rest of the season Caruso just can't score the ball don't have to go there. Io, you know, if Io gets the start again, maybe look to him, but don't like really any of these guys at the bottom besides Pat Williams, 3,500. Been playing about 30 minutes the past few games. He had to start yesterday just because Zach was out, but do really like Patrick Williams in the spot. He's a good shooter, can get you boards, you know, can score the ball inside. So I don't mind Pat Williams at 3,500. That does it for me on the Chicago side. Washington, Atlanta. Porzingis at the top, 8-4. Do really like him in this spot. Price has come down a bit, which is nice to see. You know, the minutes have been kind of locked at 30, which is annoying. But he's been able to get there. And I don't mind him in this spot against Atlanta at all. Kuzma doesn't look like he'll play, which is good news for Porzingis. And then the rest of the team, as I said, it's just everyone gets minutes. It's just who you want to take a shot on. Pulp is scoring dependent. Same thing with Hachimura, even though he got 37 minutes for some reason. He was playing well, but I'd rather go to Hachi over Pope, but also Denny is going to chew about 35 minutes. Ish, 30. So I said, take a shot on a guy. Ish, 11 points, 14 assists. Been playing really well recently, too. His price has come up, but don't mind it. Sato is going down. Kispert came about 30 minutes. Gafford came off the bench, got 31. Had a career game, basically. Nato is pretty much out of the rotation so yeah if I was to play anyone it'd obviously be posing at 8-4 and then Hachimura Denny and Ish other than that I don't think I'd to get to anyone else maybe if they give news that Gafford's going to play more you can definitely go there again Atlanta side Trey Young really like when it's washed 10-10-5 Capella not for me at 6 do like Bogdan has been playing played better the last game should see about 30 minutes if he's shooting the ball at all like him in this matchup, 5,500. Herder had a decent game again, shot the ball well. Um, he's a little too scoring dependent for me. Hunter scored the ball well, but not really involved other than that. Same with Gallo. So I'd really only look to guys like Trey and then Bogdan on this side. Moving on to OKC in Utah. We got, you know, the guys at the top. We'll hit, keep an eye on the news, as I said yesterday, that Malden and Poku didn't play. Isaiah Roby did play. Did pretty well. Obviously, this is not a great matchup for him against Gobert. So, I don't like him. Um, Trey Mann is questionable, but it looks like he won't play because they're tanking. And so, the Thunder are going to roll out just the atrocious uh, G League lineup again. Horde looks pretty good. Played 46 minutes. The whole game besides two minutes. 24 points, 21 rebounds, 61 fantasy points. Insane. So, I mean, you can definitely look to Horde if he's going to start again at 5K. Obviously, it's not a great matchup against Utah, but it looks like he'll play the whole game. You know, Lindy Waters didn't play. Or, you know, he played four minutes for some reason. Did he get hurt? Not really sure. Wiggins didn't play either. Vit did play. Only got 21 minutes. As I said, Saar, you know, played 39 minutes. Didn't shoot the ball a ton or doesn't shoot it well, but can definitely get you boards and that double-double upside. Don't mind going back to him. Earl didn't play. 
Let's see, where are the other guys? Right, as of right now, they don't have Xavier Simpson. They have this dude that played 43 minutes. Shot the ball okay. And it, you know, if this once again, if the Thunder are playing the same guys from yesterday, all the G League guys, definitely go back to them and pay up for the studs. It's going to be the same slate yesterday as it will be today. So definitely keep an eye on these Thunder news. Utah side. I mean, 8500 for Mitchell is a great price. It's a steal. Didn't play well last game. Hasn't been hitting the ceiling recently. Um, maybe he does it today against OKC. No one's going to be able to guard him. So I do really like Donovan. It's just I think this game might blow out really, really easily. I think Donovan might come out, score like 16 points in the first quarter, and then have like a 20-point lead. I think they'll, he'll get you know close to three-quarters run if that does happen, but... That is a risk on this side. Otherwise, I don't think I'd get to anyone else on this side. As I always say, a little bit of a dart throw on Clarkson. And hope he scores a ton. Whiteside is back. Had a good game last game. Maybe you can expect the same. If there's a little bit more blowout run, maybe Whiteside gets a tad more run. But he's kind of older, so maybe they go to someone else. But, yeah, that does it for me on that side. You just have to keep an eye on the news of this OKC game. Phoenix side, we got... Booker top 9-1, Paul. I mean, these are all great plays. As I mentioned yesterday, LeBron didn't play, but Crowder still did decent. Um, I don't know if these guys are going to get the full run. They hit the franchise milestone for record or wins yesterday. Maybe they'll get rested today, but if not, you know, I'd go to a guy like Chris Paul and Aiton. Otherwise, I don't think I'd get to anyone else on this side. Clipper side, like Paul George at 9,500, hasn't been playing great. His minutes did get bumped up a few more, but obviously they got blown out, so he didn't play a full game. Wasn't able to score the ball a ton. Do really like him in this spot, though, against Phoenix, even though it's a bad matchup, because Paul does it all. Or Paul George does it all, excuse me. Reggie Jackson, kind of the same thing. Going to shoot this ball a ton. Second-hand man to Chris... I don't know why I keep saying Chris Paul. Paul George. So I don't mind if you go there, especially when his price is 6200 Don't think you need to go to anyone else. Covington really came back down to earth. Powell is questionable, but it looks like he probably won't play. Hardenstein's always a decent point-per-minute guy. You know, maybe if Phoenix rests their guys, Hardenstein will get a tad more run. So I don't mind if you go to him. He's doing better than Zubak. Morris has really fallen off. Had two good back-to-back -back good games, but shot, shot the ball really well. If you want to take a you know, dart throw on him, you can. Man will get some run. Not a bad price of 5100 I just really like Paul George at the top for me, and then Reggie Jackson. Otherwise, you know, everyone else kind of seems like dart throws at their price. And that does it for me today, guys. This is kind of the route I'm looking at. Zach, RJ, Pat Williams quickly. And then definitely keep your eye out on the Detroit news. That will change stuff as well as the OKC news. And then if you keep an eye out on that, play those guys. If they're playing the G League backups, then plug in some stars. You guys will be doing well tomorrow or well tonight. And you'll probably be cashing, maybe even winning a ton of money. So if you do, you know, definitely tweet me. Follow me there at HeartTFS. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Actually, I'll see you guys later today for a prize pick video. Peace.